dungeons and dragons. And junk drawer. What's up, everyone? Hi. Hi, I'm I'm awake now. Josh is awake now. He wasn't before, but he is now. I know. Oh, it's man. a long <laughs> it's a long time. <laughs> we are back with another episode of Dungeons and Dragons. And Junk Drawer, thank you for joining us this week. Uh leading off our announcements tonight, the man in purple himself, Mike Spillane. What do you got for us, buddy? Hey, so follow us on the Junk Drawer Show uh, at, on Instagram. Uh, I just posted our first uh, playlist uh, for our characters, which reminds me, Pat, you have to send yours. So Oh, it's coming. Don't you worry, girl. Yeah, I know. The deadline was last week. So... Oh, it's been done. <laughs> but you haven't sent it. He, he gave point. us a heads up. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> anyways, um, yeah, so uh, we posted Dremel's playlist today. Uh, the link is in our bio on Instagram. So if you want to check out uh, stories <clears throat> uh, around uh, or some songs that kind of fit Dremel, be sure to check that out. Um, and uh, aside from that, uh, vamos Orlando. Up next, we have the artiste of the group, Carlos. How you doing, buddy? That's, that's me. I'm doing good. Uh, a little tired. I've been at it for like three, four days drawing the new piece for Dungeons and Dragons and Junk Drawer. Um, I'm very excited about how it's coming out, and I can't wait to uh, show everyone. So my shout out's gonna be to me for not having <laughs> carpet tunnel in the past. Hey, so, hell yeah, I like that. <laughs> also check out our shit over at uh, Red Bubble, and you can see the link. Uh, yeah, like what? Wait, I don't know where Pat is according to me, but um, check out Pat's shirt. Yeah. So uh, actually, I put up the new design. I say new, but um, the the property of Stone Ward design is up. Um, so you can check that one out as well. Um, I already got my sticker ordered, and it's being shipped, so I can put it on my stein. You'll see it hopefully next week here. We'll see. Um, but yeah, check that out. Uh, link is on Instagram and or somewhere around here. Up next, the man who's big and blue and also beautiful with his big brain, Josh Delgado. Uh, hey, guys. Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm, so I just, I have my normal short shout out, of course. Uh, today's shout out is going to be to Dreams, uh, lying to me about reality since 1992. <laughs> and, as always, let's all say it together on three, two, one. Fuck you, Fuck Donovan. You, Donovan. Hey. Donovan. Oh, that's great. I can't wait until we have a super cut of that and I just send it to him for his birthday. I just came up with his birthday <laughs> gift. Oh, that's <laughs> it. It's like... I fucking hate my birthday. Our prince, the prince himself, the most handsome boy in all the land. Justin, Dice Daddy, what prince you got Patty. for us? It's, prince it, Patty? It is Prince Patty. Uh, hello. Uh, my shout outs are, of course, to Roll20 being wonderful. Um, and then I also wanted to shout out some of the resources that I normally use, which is Mythic Portal Games, Purple Heroes, Kev's Lounge, um, the incomparable David Hemingway, uh, Devin Knight for some of our cool uh, tokens that we may or may not be using, and uh, Chuck Peku, who made this awesome casino ship battle map uh, that I that I love so very much. And of course, shout outs to Tapatio. Uh, if you want to make a Michelada at home, you can with salt, chili powder, lime, Tapatio, of course, and a chilled Modelo. This is the so. weirdest bit I've ever heard in my whole life. <laughs> what, Tapatio? It's turned into, like, a, a, a beverage show. No, yeah. it's not. It's uh, strictly just Tapatio. I don't... Uh, Tapatio. Okay. We delicioso. Oh, yes. The romance language. Italian. <laughs> See. Okay. So, I will... Close out tonight by starting with my favorite shout out and my shout out I do every week. Uh, I would like to thank my wife for letting me come sit here for multiple hours on end and play Imagination with you guys. I love her and I appreciate her. Shannon, you'll never watch this, but I love you. Uh, also, shout out to my sister's girlfriend, Corinne, 
follow her on Instagram. She's going to be doing some art for us. She also has an Etsy store open where she sells really adorable tiny baby earrings. And she's got a 15% off coupon code right now. So do that. Uh, follow her at buy period sugar period strawberries. You should follow her there and uh, get some earrings that are adorable and there's Care Bear shaped. So do that. And she's going to have some art for us. I know what Donner looks like and uh, I've gotten to see that. But more art is coming from people not named Carlos, which is so exciting because it's like (laughs) we almost have one and a half fans. Yeah. (laughs) One of those fans plays with us. What was her (laughs) handler again? I missed it. By period sugared. S-U-G-A-R-E-D, period, strawberries. By sugared sugared strawberries, but it's B-Y, not B-U-Y. Missed opportunity, Corinne. You you always want to be buying. (laughs) Missed opportunity. Always buy, never sell. Thank you, Corinne, for your awesome earrings and your awesome art that you are going to be commissioning for us. We appreciate you. With all that being said, Dice Daddy, whenever you're ready. Yes, I will. So last time we were all together, we had boarded the Wandering Rose, the uh, pleasure cruise ship of Driftwood Harbor. Um, Eventually, uh, the four of you had explored the ship to an extent, met a few of the uh, different shipmates. Uh, You had met uh, personally Brock Dell, uh, the Goliath, also known as Brock, and... Eventually, Donner and Dremel uh, separately had counsel with um, uh, the captain, uh, Captain Jessica Creed. Um, Hilarity ensued. There is uh, warranted of Dremel finally getting magic mushroom drugs that he's very excited about. And uh, last time we kind of left it was Donner was going to the uh, bottom deck where his room is, which is in the aquatic room. Uh, Dremel was in the captain's quarters waiting for, uh, the captain to come back and Alder and Thok were currently with, uh, Valdana and Brock as, uh, there was an announcement made at the, uh, ramp of the ship. So we'll take it back a little bit. Let me shake the cobwebs a little bit as well. Cause I also napped today and we'll get into it. So, <clears throat> Thok and Alder, you are on top of the uh, the first initial level of the ship, uh, which is outside with the crow's nests um, and all the different casino tables. There are drinks being passed back and forth. Uh, as Brock is kind of just leaning on his cheek with his hand and Val is kind of resting her head on his shoulder as they're getting, they, they gotten pretty sloshed. Uh, there is a commotion from the uh, front of the ship where the ramp is that connects to the deck as you uh, see six men covered in uh, plate mail uh, <clears throat> and leathers, basically brandishing different uh, weaponry on their sides and on their backs. Uh, and the head of this guard goes... <sniffs> We're looking for a young lady that fits the description of tan skin, black hair with dreadlocks, and the ability to throw lightning. Now, we heard that she went onto this ship, and she has been wanted for some questioning. So, if you'd please, we would like to locate this woman. So, we will take it from there. So, Falk and Alder, you are currently (laughs) next to said woman that is being... uh, kind of question for. Is he asking this to us? He's asking it to the ship in general. Like, the music cuts out as soon as they get on there. All the drinks, like, all the people just stop moving as the the guard barks this at the the deck. And as soon as he finishes, I just go, to the queen! And Brock goes, yeah! To the queen! And he also... Puts a drink back, and Val goes to the queen. To, to the queen, and as <laughs> again, I'm gonna try to do this sneakily. Um, mm-hmm. I'm gonna sneakily cast banishment on her. <laughs> okay, great. Um, <clears throat> hopefully, like everyone, I would. I'm not drunk, 
So I would do it when it looks like no one's looking in our general direction. I can totally But she's right. drunk. <laughs> she's drunk. That's why she's failing her saving throw. That's true. Uh, so go ahead and roll a, sl- a stealth check for me to see if you can cast this spell inconspicuously. Stealth. And I'm not wearing my armor. so that Well, I mean, I'm not trying to do that. Cool. <clears throat> Uh, 18. 18. So it is solid. You're able to do the spell without kind of causing any alarm or any attention towards you. Um, and and I put my head down on the table, like pretend to be wasted. And you hear in your ear, Manu going, that wasn't actually a bad idea. I'm not a complete idiot, you know? Uh, that's debatable. We'll discuss okay. this later. <laughs> so, uh, it is a charisma saving throw or a con save? It is, if I'm not mistaken, a charisma. Hold on, I'm double checking. Um, charisma saving throw. Okay. So, it will be a disadvantage. Uh, she got a seven. Oh, yeah, that's a fail. Ooh, just succeeded. <clears throat> just so, a bit outside. So, as the guards just... kind of... Uh, approach the deck and they start walking around Val just kind of pops out of existence and Brock goes oh, oh, oh she disappeared no and then you hear Manu in your ear go I don't know if not telling everyone the plan was the best idea actually <laughs> I, I, I don't come up quick it's, it's okay here have another drink and I push another drink towards him I so I want another drink. As he puts the the drink to his lips, as he cries <laughs> into the glass. <laughs> Eventually, the how long does banishment last? A minute. <laughs> okay, great. So, <clears throat> it's gonna go so bad. As yeah. as they're kind of walking around, eventually the uh, the guard captain does come over to you and says. Sorry to interrupt the uh, the party, gentlemen. We are looking currently for a young woman that uh, fits the description of, and he describes in almost excruciating detail Valdana's appearance. As you hear in your ear, Manu going, "It's tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. It's happening. She's going to come she back went, like any moment." I think now. she went that way, and like I point away from us. Okay, go and... ahead and roll a deception check. Oh, God, why is it me? Because you're talking. I know, but somebody had to do something. It's uh, very true. Uh, 16 to, plus to 1. The, to what's, the queen. What's my... Deception? Deception. Uh, that's a straight 16. Okay. Straight 16. Have you also considered maybe to the queen? <laughs> to the queen. To, to, to the queen. They got a natural 3. Okay. So <clears throat> they look at you and they go... She's over there. Okay. Uh, thank you for your cooperation. Greatly appreciate it. And as, the... Go for as it. soon as they start like moving, you just hear kind of a, as you see Val and she's like, and she's covered. Uh, you didn't roll for where she was vanished to. Uh, it, it says that it, I think she goes to a harmless demi plane. Hold on. I'll re, I'll read. Native blah, 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 to a harmless demi plane, and you're uh, you're still Brock, right? Yeah. <clears throat> okay. He's also Brock. Um, <laughs> go ahead and roll a a D one hundred for me. Okay. God, okay. where's the other one? Oh. Twenty two. Twenty two. Okay. Give me one second. <laughs> It says harmless. It does say harmless. When she comes back, she is uh, literally drenched in what you could only assume is either bog water or just kind of some murky brown water. And she is covered in just roots and mud and silt as she's like... And Manu goes, she smells like... You look like you smell. That's what happens when you get put in bong water. <clears throat> That's great. What do we do with her now? Um, maybe perhaps move her before the captain, the guard captain comes back. Maybe. Maybe also wash her would be susceptible. Or, one, you know, good. One thing at a time. 
okay, how about we move the the woman before, you know, you know who notices it. And Brock goes, oh my God, my daughter, you're back. And she's <laughs> drunk, right? She's passed out. <laughs> I'm going to touch her and cast Lesser Restoration to cure. Okay. It says poison, and I'm assuming that drunkenness is a type of poison. It is. So you press, uh, you uh, unpoison her as she slowly goes, fuck my head. Hey, um, they're actually oh, here on the ship looking for you. Shit. Like, you need to hide now. What? Uh, why am I covered in mud? Again, the guards are looking for you. You need I to smell hide like now. Sh <clears throat> and she actually gets under the table. <laughs> and Rock's like, oh, and she, oh, she's hiding. Okay. Everyone act natural. To the queen. You're the queen. And he moves his hand and goes, Poof. Hits his head on the, the table and comes back up and just darts. I missed my hand. <laughs> okay, she's going to attempt to, on her hands and knees, crawl away. I'm going to blood. Uh, uh, no, never mind. Okay, great. And you see her and she slowly starts taking the tablecloth that's on the table with her. As Manu is now sitting on the table. <laughs> It crisscrossed, and he's looking at you like dead faced, Bach, and goes, She's not doing a great job. No, she's not. And I'm going to cast, I'm going to keep casting shit. I'm going to cast Thaumaturgy to make it sound like a clash of thunder coming like further towards the direction that I pointed off the ship. Okay. So you go ahead and you cast Thaumaturgy, and <clears throat> about 60 feet away from the ship, on a uh, obviously on the dock, this very loud, booming, crackling thunder is heard, and um, the the guards kind of look at each other and they go, "Did you hear that thunder?" When the uh, the townsfolk said that when she brought lightning, that thunder, of course, followed because that's what happens. I'm so tired. Sorry. Um, so basically. The, uh, the bluff does work as they slowly start coming off of the ship. However, I'm going to just make one last stealth and uh, perception check. She got the same roll again. And then let me see what the perception is. You want me to roll stealth? Actually, the passive perception is 11. No. Okay. No. So as they're moving, the cloth kind of comes off of the table and all the glasses that are on the table just kind of shatter as the three of you are keeping your arms on like the edge of the table and the guard captain looks around and sees that there is a tablecloth and a person under it uh, crawling on the floor and goes what's that then? Uh, it's my friend uh, very think of something. drunk Mm -hmm. Very, very drunk, Fred. Very, very drunk. Say you have to take responsibility of her. No, him. Say him. Of him. He's to very the queen. Drunk. I, I'll, I'll take care of him. Yeah, we should all take care of each other. <laughs> and and I, go, go ahead and roll uh, a deception check. Oh, God. Do it at advantage because your buddies are backing you up. Oh, thank God, because that was a two. Oh, thank God, that was a natural 20. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> so you get up and you're like, there, there, Archibald. And Val smells like shit. And there's mud coming through the white tablecloth that's wrapping her. She's almost like a shit-stained mummy. And Manu's like, this is, this is amazing. You, need a, you need a bath, and I like pick her up still wrapped yeah. in the blankets and start walking towards where Donner went. Yeah. And Brock's like, yeah, no, we should probably stop drinking. Ages, we're gonna keep drinking, mate. To the, to the queen. Fuck yeah, to the queen, dude. To the queen. I don't and even know who the queen is. Oh, her name's Anya. She's uh, real nice, but also not. To the queen. To the queen. I've met her once. 
And before uh, I go below deck or wherever the hell I yeah. am, uh, I'm going to make another thunderous sound coming from that direction that I made it sound like before. Okay. And one of them goes, Captain, we have to move quickly. She might be moving through the city. There might be more people getting struck by lightning. And the captain's like, thank you all for your uh, cooperation. Greatly appreciated. You're all upstanding citizens. And then kind of looks at Aegis and Brock at the table and he goes, eh. And then the six of them leave. All right, so I will put this battle map away. <laughs> I have to be prepared. Good, I don't know how a drunken battle would go. Not good. Everything's not a disadvantage. Good. Everything except, unfortunately, Carlos, and he's not wearing armor. <laughs> <laughs> to so, the queen. <laughs> to the queen, y'all. And Brock's like, what if we, like, oh, what if we gave alcohol to your bird? <laughs> Have you ever, has she ever been drunk? Yeah, it's a really bad idea. And he puts his hand on your shoulder. He's like, but hear me out, Aegis. What if your bird got drunk? I hear what you're saying. I do. I hear what I'm putting down, mate. <clears throat> but she can't say to the queen. She doesn't have words. So since she can't say to the queen, Pickles. she shouldn't get drunk. Oh, that same no. reason baby shouldn't get drunk. They can't say to the queen either. No, that's fair. That's fair. A baby could not get drunk. But I, mean, I it feel could, like it could, but, it should. but you should. Uh, uh, so we'll we'll uh, jam cut or hard cut to uh, Manu and Thok walking with Val. And she's just kind of like, you hear her groaning. She's like, I have the worst hangover right now. Oh, you, God. You'll have an even worse hangover in jail. This ship needs to go now. Yeah, no. I'll just tell my cousin, yeah, we got to go now. Let's do it. And Manu's like, I feel like that's actually a, a solid idea. I feel like she's being sarcastic, though, right now. Yeah, how about uh, your sarcasm? Not needed right now. Let's get the hell out of here before they arrest you. They're I'm covered in shit. Here. Well, you can be uncovered. We'll explain everything to your cousin later. Just explain it now, like they're after you. Fine. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and can you put me down? Oh, yeah. Here. And I set her down. And you see her and she... <laughs> Sorry. Thank you. And she uh, looks at herself and slops the, uh, the sludge that's on her and just... I am going to go, I'll go to the the quarters, and uh, I will tell her we need to leave right away. She's not going to be right. Okay, I'll be back. And Manu just kind of stands there with you, his arms are crossed, and he goes, she seems nice. Yeah, she's <laughs> lovely, just like her cousin. Lovely. Love Cousin is. <clears throat> anyway, um, Do so you? we should. I'm what sorry? was that? Nothing. I didn't know that ghosts can blush. I don't have blood. I'm not blushing. Uh huh. Shut up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and in my so, head, I'm like, I'm just like lowly singing Manu and Jesse sitting in a tree. <laughs> but, <laughs> you're really bad at singing. I know. He replies to you. You're really bad at it. I know. I... I must still do it. This is my nightmare. Um, so as the two of you are walking, I'm going to assume back either up to the higher deck or are you going to go to your room? Uh, I'll go to Alder. So okay. the, up, the, the higher deck. Okay. So... You go back up to Alder, and Alder and Brock are just pounding drinks. Like, there are two more glasses, and you weren't down for long. You're back up, and there are, like, short, like, uh, rocks glasses that are just empty, filled with ice with this kind of amber liquid all the way at the bottom of it. As Alder's, like, <laughs> holding his tum-tum. What the fuck? Like... We'll see. We can hear you. Okay. We'll get there. Um, so, Bach, you kind of sit back down and you're like, okay, any minute, 
They'll come back up, and then we'll just start moving the ship. We'll hoist the sails. We'll move forward, and uh, we'll, we'll be on our way. Yeah, we... you'll be completely on your way. Fifteen minutes pass. Twenty minutes pass. There's no sense of urgency on the ship or on the deck. And eventually, like 30, 40 minutes later, the mud's been dried now. And there are actually like tear streaks through the mud. And she sits down and she goes, she said no. What do you mean she said no? She said, we can't, we're not trying to cause alarm. If we move now, it's going to look bad. So I'm not what? crying because she hurt my feelings. It's just noises are really loud right now. As she puts <laughs> her head down. Well, <laughs> how about we just... They, they don't think you're on the ship. So that's good. That's great. Let's just... Can we get you into a quarter and just... You can lay down. Here, I'm gonna, let's... I'm going to bathe. What did my... What, is there a bath in the same room as my friend Donner was staying in? Well, I mean, it's a luxury suite. There's going to definitely be a bath in there. Then can you take a bath in there while we just make sure that you're okay? Trust me, you're not my type. I'm not going to look. Like, just, I'm looking out for your best interest. And she puts, uh, she goes into her crusty, gross, smudgy pocket and she has this key that's just covered in sludge. And she puts it in your hand and goes, that's the key to my room. If you could please get me clean clothes. And uh, I have a book that's on a nightstand. If you could get that as well, that would be wonderful. And which one's your room? Look at the tag on the, uh, the key. It'll tell you the number. Got it. And I had to do that. Okay. So, <clears throat> as that's happenstancing... Uh, Dremel, you Me. are you're in the captain's quarters for an exponentially long time. You're there for I would say anywhere from about thirty to forty minutes. At one point, you hear that there was uh, almost like a muffled conversation outside the door as you're kind of like looking around. You're looking at all the different uh, knickknacks and trinkets, and you hear at one point, "Are you crying? Are you crying? I'm just really hungover." As you hear the two cousins fighting outside of the the door, uh, anything in particular that you're doing while you're in the captain's quarters for that <laughs> strong length of time? Uh, I would like to look around, uh, see if there's any um, any maps, any plans about where they've been, where they're going. Uh, nothing that I have to get too um, too investigative to. I don't I don't want to upset the captain mm. by going through her stuff but right. if there's anything out of entrance I'd like to interest I'd like to look at that okay um, so you take a, uh, a look around and you see on her desk she has different charters and maps and you see different um, kind of navigators tools that she, she utilizes uh, you do see that there are several places on the map that she uh, she's charting you see obviously Driftwood Harbor it looks like she actually came from a uh, another port, which looks like it was the uh, Saltstone Wharf port. Uh, <clears throat> and you see different kind of government paperwork that is on her desk, like different treaties that she has coming up, that she has signed and stamped. It looks like she ha she does well for herself, it looks like. Okay. Um, anything around? I, I, are it like books or other glassware um go ahead and there is i would say there is a bookshelf um as you kind of like look through the spines you see that there are different um manuals different naval maps there are the occasional like i wouldn't say it's like a school textbook but different kind of textbooks in regarding agriculture and um different gods and there's just it's a, a small wealth of information uh, go ahead and roll an investigation check for me. 19. Okay. As you do, uh, you do see that um, around the third kind of shelf, there is like a little piece of parchment that sticks out that looks like it's uh, not in there tightly, like it gets moved in and out quite often. Um, <clears throat> and, I mean, 
if you're looking for something in particular on the bookshelf, you can also uh, let me know as well. Uh, seeing that, I think I'll I'll take the book that it's peeking out from. Is it peeking mm -hmm. out between two books, or is it between two? Okay, um, I'll, I'll grab whichever one is to the right, and with my finger grab it. Okay. Uh, so that I have both the book and whatever this parchment is, um, just in case she comes back in the room. Gotcha. And I'd, I'd like to see what the the paper says. Okay. Um. So, what languages do you speak? Uh. Common, Elvish, Giant, a little bit of Dwarvish, and then there was there was one other that I discovered I read. I sent okay. it to you a couple weeks ago. I forget. Gotcha. Um. Okay, so the language that it's written in isn't, I would say it's in common, but it looks like it is not stylized, but it's, it's hard to, it's kind of hard to explain. You would recognize this as possibly under common. Um, it's just, unfortunately, you don't know under common, but you do see at the bottom that there's this very flourished signature that says, uh, <clears throat> Alistair Creed. Common. Alistair Creed. And, um, point of information. Th yes. That's her last name, right? Creed? That is her last name. Yes. Okay. She goes by Creed. All right. Uh, do I, do I still hear the commotion outside? You hear it dying down a bit as the, the doorknob starts to rattle. Okay, I'd like to remember uh, as much of the uh, the note as I can. Okay. Just uh, to maybe write it down later, but quickly put it back where I found it. Okay. Perfect. So you're able to do so as you hear the, the door kind of creak open as a very flummoxed Captain Creed comes in and she closes the door and she goes, I apologize. There were a few additional matters that... I had to see through. Um, it seems that the captain's guard was looking for my cousin on the ship. Oh boy. However, uh, it seems as though your friend Brock was able to, not my Brock, your Brock, was able to uh, convince them otherwise with a, a few thunder sounds. Um, they're getting antsy to move quickly, but unfortunately, I don't think it's wise to move right this instant. Well, that would tip would, them off. It would tip them off. And she says this as she's kind of making her way back over to where you're uh, standing. And she goes, I'm not in the uh, business of getting commandeered and uh, impounded by uh, the government of Driftwood Harbor. As nice as it may be. Uh, I understand that. Uh, sometimes when you're in charge, you got to Make some decisions that your followers don't understand. What's that saying? Uh, heavy lies the crown? Yes, heavy lies the crown. And as she says that, she kind of like looks off a little bit and she goes, So, um, I trust you didn't get into too much trouble. Everything seems to be not on fire. <laughs> yeah, good. of course not. Looked around a little bit. Saw that you have quite the treasure trove of information over here. Yes, well, my uh, my uncle always said that uh, knowledge was uh, incredibly powerful and uh, important, so he made sure that I studied. My father was not much of a studier, went more with his gut than his head. It could be said that both of those are equally as important, and it's about finding a balance between them. Very, very uh, good idea. <laughs> very well said. As she smiles and she goes, I'm going to have another drink, though. Would you like another drink? I'm that gonna have would be drink. fantastic. And she kind of smiles as she pours another brandy. Um, <clears throat> do you have anything else you want to add before we shift over? Uh, no, that's all right. All right. Let's shift. So, Donner, you're sitting in the middle of the clam bed and you're like, <clears throat> OK, it's been like 30 minutes. 40 minutes. If you had a ball, you'd probably be like throwing the ball against the wall and catching it. Eventually you hear um, like this kind of like 
sigh as the door opens and there is a very crusted, muddied over Valdana looking in the doorway. And she goes, um, the guard were here. I hid. And now I need to take a buff. And she does not make eye contact with you. Uh, <clears throat> where did you hide? I don't know. I was asleep. Um, okay. Is, uh, do you need someone to get you clothes and... Nope. Brock, uh, sorry, not my Brock. Your Brock has got that covered. He's going to be coming down with that. Just stay here. And if anyone asks for me, I'm not in. Okay. I mean, nobody should ask for you because technically you're preoccupied. Technically. Technically. Good job. And she goes, I'm just... And she goes into the back of the uh, <clears throat> the bathroom. And eventually within that 40 minute time span, you did explore like you do see that there are different kind of linens that were in like this nice uh, dresser, this vanity that has different kind of uh, oils and uh, candles and all of these accoutrements to kind of customize what you want your your evening to be. Um, Eventually, you did make it to the bathroom, and you do see that the bath is big enough for to comfortably sit, like, two people in. Um, <clears throat> it does have a kind of running water system as you kind of, like, turned one of the knobs. If you don't know if it's, like, enchanted, you didn't really bother to look. Uh, and there is, you know, a very handsome vanity as you slowly go back in. Um, I would say about five minutes passes as you hear running is water. Is there... <clears throat> Sorry. Is Not there uh, like a mirror in the room? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to just kind of stand in the mirror for a minute. Mm -hmm. Just kind of keep playing with my hair. It's so weird. I'm so uncomfortable. Not doing this again. This is weird. <laughs> I don't like it. <laughs> uh, like, yeah. Touching the bald it's, sides. Yeah, look, I'm just like feeling the, sh the, like, the shavedness of it. Mm -hmm. it's, I don't know. This was a mistake. <laughs> I fucked up. You know, I kind of blend a little better, but it wasn't. No, I didn't. Mm, it's not going to happen again. So as you're muttering to yourself, you do hear the water run. You do hear uh, a body going into the water and then it just kind of stills for a little bit. As fuck, you eventually are able to go into Valdana's room. Is there anything particularly that you want to do besides getting the book and the uh, clothes? I mean, like, I'll, like, glance around real quick, but I will get exactly what she wanted me to do. I don't want to invade her privacy too much. Um, okay. I, I already have a bad rep with this family, so... Uh, Roll and... a... Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, Go on. Uh, no, that was it. That was it. Go ahead and roll a uh, perception check for me while Manu is going to be sitting on her dresser in crisscross. And then as you kind of, like, move about the room, it's almost like he teleports, like he's then on the bed, not moving. He's just watching you the whole time. Uh, what is your perception check? Uh, 15. 15. Okay. Um, you kind of look around and you do see where the book is and uh, you're able to kind of go into this dresser and you see that there are these kind of uh, linen clothes. And you do see at the foot of the bed, there is a trunk. And, and I look at Manu, I'm at Manu and I'm like, uh, should I like grab the clothes in here? Should I probably grab some clothes in the trunk? What do you think? And he kind of like looks and he's like, what do you think's in the trunk? Clo you think she put clothes from the trunk into the dresser or? Mm -hmm. I don't know where women put their clothes. I don't really live with one. So. What do you put your clothes? I put my clothes in my trunk. I mean, okay, I then get the look at the trunk then. Okay, oh, fuck, and I open the trunk. You guys are the cutest married couple. So by the way. you you open the trunk and there are different vestiges. Uh, there are blocks of incense, uh, different kind of parchment with ink in. Uh, you do see that there is this blue and silver and brown scale mail armor. And you do see that there is this long sword in its sheath that on it 
has a, uh, a symbol on it. If you would like to roll a religion check, you might be able to figure out what that symbol is to. That is a 13. 13. I will, I'll give it to you because you also, I mean, you've been with Donner and Donner mentioned the name. You can assume that this is the symbol of Talos, which is three lightning bolts converging into one center point. Okay. Um, I'm going to grab the armor, the weapon, like anything that I can potentially uh, gather as components to anything she may need just for defensive purposes and mm -hmm. put it all in like a bed sheet, wrap it around like a little bag. Okay. And then <clears throat> I'm also going to go in the closet and just grab her like just comfortable clothes for the night. Okay. Uh, so what you do is like Manu gets off the bed and you just put everything on the, the initial blanket and you fold it up and you kind of Santa Claus ransack it. Um, <clears throat> you do go into the closet and you see that there are just rows and rows of, you would assume, costumes that she has to wear. Oh, God. Like, and I'll just flip through. I'm like, is there anything that looks comfortable, like, and not sexy? <laughs> and you you go through and <laughs> at one point there is a, um, on a hanger, it looks like it's almost like it's just made out of string and very uh, see-through lace. As Manu goes, that's not clothes. No. <laughs> <laughs> that's floss. Keep going. I go on. And it's kind of like more of the same. Eventually you do get to, it looks like it's a silk nightgown that has this kind of uh, lace trim on it. It's very, uh, let's say, clingy to the body but also wafty at the the bottom and he goes i think that's the best we're gonna do agreed <laughs> and i put that with my little ransack of armor and shit make sure i don't forget the book and i head towards the is it the aqua room it's the aquatic room yes. aquatic room uh and head towards the aquatic room and manu puts his hands like on your chest and you stop moving he's like what are we going to say if someone asks what we're doing? You have a giant sack behind you. You look like Father Christmas. Who the fuck is Father Christmas? Um, no clue. I don't, oh, wait, hold on. Uh, I'm going to put the sack in front of me, and I'm going to tie it somehow and use my hat of disguise to look like a very overweight human. And ta-da, Father Christmas with a white beard and red coat. Now I mean, you we're not going far. You definitely do look like Father Christmas now. And I, this was the ace in the hole? This is the best I can think of in a pinch. I'm not good under pressure. Oh my God, please let us never be under pressure again. As you open the door and you're like, well, as you're bumping into things and you hear the occasional like clanking of the armor as your stomach jingles and he's like yeah no those are jingle bells just if anyone asks <clears throat> so as the two of you kind of move uh, eventually Donner you hear the like a soft knock at the door I'll slowly get up and uh, go over like uh, I'll open it but it'll be a crack first you open a crack, and you're met with this white-bearded, sweaty, very fat gentleman. Uh, we're busy in here, mate. Sorry. Let me in. It's... Click. No. <laughs> <laughs> and Manu's like, no, you're doing great. <laughs> I knock again. I open the door again. I don't, it's, um, I don't it's like... Me. It's me. It's me. It's Fock. It's no. Fock. It's, I dropped the illusion. Oh, all right. Just let me in. <laughs> and Falk just comes in and he has this massive just blanket. And it, it's, you know, you could see what the stomach was that he uh, materialized. Oh, Father Christmas. I get it. I get it. Not... Who is this guy? And why does everyone know about him? Shit. Well, everyone knows who he is. He brings treats. I'm not originally from this realm. Remember? Do you have like, any toys for me? Did you bring any prize or anything? Well, this me? isn't for you. It's for Val. But I mean... 
but if you're going to be followed, never mind. Oh and <laughs> Manu looks at the bed and he goes, is that a giant clam? I'm not going to ask. We don't have to ask, just look at it. That's a clam. That, that, that is a clam. That Maybe is we should have brought the mermaid costume. Anyways, never mind. Never mind. Um, <laughs> so I just put <clears throat> all her shit on the bed. Okay, so Donner, you see on the bed that there is this scale mail armor, this massive long sword that has the uh, symbol of Talos on it, and you see a few other accoutrement, and uh, you see that there is this sheer kind of like nightgown as well. Uh, what's that for? Precaution, in case we have to fight. I don't know. Like, she's fine. gonna fight in a nightgown. That's what she's gonna. No, there's armor there. Yeah, yeah, that's not. I know what armor's for. Fuck, I've I've been in battle with you many times already. Uh, oh, not what I'm referencing. The other thing, the very thin. It was the closest thing to like comfortable clothing for nighttime that I could find. It was either that or floss. Floss. Yeah. It. It. Don't worry about it. It's literally like there was nothing um it was just string i don't know it might be a new kink who knows but you confuse me in so many ways so frequently i just i you're welcome i'll go over uh i'll pick up the uh nightgown mm -hmm. and i'll kind of is there a door is it a curtain what is it's kind of like a um <clears throat> It's a curtain that kind of goes into a much larger room as eventually you did see like steam and like the fog and the, uh, the mirrors in the room start to fog up a little bit. So I'm going to, uh, kind of wait at the doorway. Yeah. And I'm going to be like, uh, Val. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, Thok is here with, he brought, uh, some stuff that mm -hmm. you'd requested. Um, and I'm just going to kind of put my arm through the door. With the nightgown. Uh, this is what he brought for you to wear tonight. And you hear, like, silence, and she goes, I see. Uh, yep. Could have been worse. Uh, apparently you have floss in your room. It's, it's different kind of strength. It's just, it's it's fine, Donna. Um, and you hear, like, the water move, and she goes, can you just put it on the, the back of the chair in the sure. room, please? Yeah, of, of course. And I'll just do that. As you go in, like share her face is like I'm just like I'm down to the these. like her head, her head sticking out, and you're like bumping into shit, and she's like Donna, just look up. Donna, no, it's just, fine. You're, Donna, you're I'm a in lady. the uh, I'm in the butt. Donna, just look up, man. And I'll I'll like look up, and you just see her, and her hair is just kind of like flat back, and you just see those gold eyes looking at you, and she goes, "Fine." Yeah. Uh, okay. And I kind of just throw it over the chair, and I just make my way out. You're like, okay, you look shitty. Bye, Denise. <laughs> uh, I said, you look shitty. You look pretty, what would you say? Um, and you just immediately book line it out of there. And Thok, you're kind of like looking around the room, and you see Donner just immediately just come out of the bathroom. And Manu is sitting on the clam bed, and he's like, why is he so nervous around her? Maybe I should have been the one to deliver the nightgown. Yeah. <laughs> I just like, I'm just laughing, but I make sure that I change myself back to Brock just in case. She knows your folk. She. I know she knows I'm fog, but what if somebody else comes in? No one. Why does everyone think someone's supposed to come in? That's not. This room is is supposed to be in use. If you think I'm fine, then fine. I'll drop the disguise. I just. I was just being cautious. I'm I never can, cautious. I guess if Brock shows up. He'll be like, what happened to other Brock? And then you'll be like, I don't know. And we can cross that bridge when we get there. I don't know. What is... I, I thought you just said Brock? that nobody should be disturbing this room. No one so should be, but if Alder doesn't up. Alder doesn't know that, Alder's drunk as a skunk. At least he was when I left. Did it get oh, worse yeah. or better? No, Alder's like... <laughs> Smash cut to Alder going, Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Clean to the... I'm the mast. Yeah. He's like, uh, hold me, Brock. I can fly. And, and Brock Brock's, is Brock's like, hello? <laughs> um, Manu's like, this is the brain trust right here. 
And he gestures to both Donner and you, Falk. Real tight, real smart. Uh, Dremel is in with uh, Captain Creed right now. So I don't think we're going anywhere. I think we're here for the night. Okay. Um, are you okay if I crash in your room? Um, I, I thought you guys were going to follow me down. It was kind of part of the idea. No, one decided to have magic mushrooms or something. I don't know. I don't even know what the hell they're doing with Creed. The other one is getting wasted with Brock. I was trying to make sure that she didn't get arrested. I, you should have just uh, told me to follow you. You didn't say well, anything. The, the, the rule tonight from this point forward is uh, don't leave this fucking room. We don't leave for anything. If we need anything, I can send someone to get something for us. Okay. Because we don't need okay. any more craziness. So I'm probably going to need to send someone to get me then, just saying. Uh, oh, that's exactly what I was going to say. He so doesn't know that. Is going to <laughs> go get Alder. Because if... Obviously, I... I can't leave. No, I mean, I'll, I can't, I'll but... figure out the Alder situation. Just let me take care of it. Do you want me to try to send him a message? Let's just see where the hell he is. There's no way that that's going to go well. It's fine. We have Val. She knows other people he, on the ship. He shouldn't be out and about. I know. Just, I got it, Doc. I got okay. it. Okay. Then in that case, I will go make myself comfortable somewhere and it's find a, a little uh... corner in the room. <laughs> So it's a fairly large room. There are different like seating arrangements. You do see that there are two like armchairs. I would say there's like a, a chaise lounge, um, like uh, kind of like a fainting couch. That's the only way I can describe it. Uh, <laughs> so you can kind of, oh. so you can kind of lay on that, and as you kind of like look at it, you look back over. Manu's on the bed. He's like, that definitely has something on it. Don't sit on it. I'm not, I don't need to worry about that. Uh, I'm going to walk out and go look for Alda. Okay. So <clears throat> Donner kind of beelines to the uh, the door and opens it. Uh, did you tell Thok? I'm guessing you're going to yeah. be like, hey, Thok, I'm going to go find Alder. So yeah. as that's going on, speaking of Alder, we're going to smash cut back to the top. And Brock's like, and that's my graduation story. Lots of blood everywhere. But regardless, we survived. It honestly was so beautiful that I can't, I can't. It was so good. Fucking and you, you prevailed. And but I don't know why you do that. <laughs> it's what we do, mate. Um, I just learned so much about what you do. And <laughs> I feel like we're so much closer now. We are. We are, Aegis. Now you tell me about your graduation. <laughs> oh, I can't. Fuck. <laughs> why, 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 why can't you? <gasps> Did someone die as well? One. You didn't have one. Oh and one God. of the... the you guys waitress. sound like huskies. <laughs> we, we're, we're making whale noises <laughs> one of the waitresses kind of comes by he's like you never got a graduation and she's like okay Brock and he's like two more drinks please <laughs> as the two of you are there and <laughs> Donner eventually you're able to find the whale noises yeah I don't it probably wouldn't take me that long no <laughs> it does not as the night is starting yeah, to him. die down. Um, the Some of the ladies are going with some of the patrons um, as the the top deck of the ship is starting to slow and close. Uh, you would think there is most likely a last round, but at this point, Brock is Brock, so he's able to get drinks as much as he wants. As one of the waitresses is like, <clears throat> kind of busting tables and occasionally checking on the two of you. As Donner, you see that um, Brock and Aegis are hanging out at the same table that they were at before. Oh, Aegis. I thought I would find you here. Hey! Did you ever, did you ever have a graduation? Uh, yes, I did. did. 
Oh, let's hear your graduation story. Uh, maybe another time, uh, Brock number one. So, I gotta get uh, ages to bed, you know. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, did I keep him from bed? Uh, probably. I mean, he's kind of drunk and, and like awake right there, but I'm yeah. not. It's not. We're not together. You're not I'm really tired. You're not like this together. No. Like I don't. I mean, I've got a wife. Oh no. Wife. That doesn't mean anything. I mean, it does to me. Oh, that's. that's a... <laughs> yeah, I uh, can't. It's, yeah. <laughs> okay. Bro, mm. hey, it was. Uh, we're yeah. gonna be on the ship for with you for the next few days. Yeah. So. Oh. Yeah, we're gonna be here. You tell me the story I later. I will fucking tell you the story. Hell yeah. Yeah. But I... right now he's got to get sobered up so that we can make some moves in the morning. Making we why are we making moves in the morning? Maybe uh, because we need to. You think about that, and I'll just grab Alda and start walking back. Oh, hey. I miss you, Brock. I'll miss you ages. And goodbye, bird. I tried to give beer to. And then I kind of just look over to Donna, and I, I, I just kind of like tap him like on the peck. And I'm just like, hey, you are such a good friend. Like, I never had friends who cared for me when I'm... <laughs> Real drunk like this before. Uh, it's just, uh, partially because I don't have friends, partially because I don't get drunk, but I've never had this, and you're so nice. Oh, there. You are just sheets to the wind right now. I don't know what that means, but I feel like the answer is yes. <laughs> <laughs> to the queen, Oliver. To the queen. <laughs> to the fucking queen. And I'll just kind of like put my arm around his shoulder, partially to like. Keep him standing upright. Yeah. Oh, but you're also holding me up 100. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Also, as a sign of solidarity to drunk older. Yeah, but also like stay up on yep. your feet, please. And his feet are just dragging. <laughs> yeah, like on him up like a parrot. <laughs> you're holding me up, and then I is flapping her wings while she's hanging on to some of my clothes. She's basically trying to keep him up with by his cloak, and you're doing a joint effort. As Alder, you are pissed probably did just oh yeah pissed. but eventually we can go into more information that you learned from brock when you're sober and hey. home. so we will go over to dremel and captain creed eventually the awkwardness that you two initially had it and the conversations that you got became more in depth as the brandy kind of flowed and eventually the two of you are kind of seated at the floor position instead of the the chairs you're like next to the chairs but it's almost like um it wasn't as personable and so i'm assuming you're telling her a funny anecdote as she's kind of watching you weave these different kind of stories and and whatnot as she keeps refilling your glass and her glass just kind of enjoying the company and it turns out it was my brother the entire time it was your brother. Wow. Yeah, it's something I never thought he would have done, but that really, uh, it really showed me a new side of him. And uh, we, we've been, uh, well, we were close after that. We're close. And you, who's your brother now? <laughs> I don't know why I laughed. Um, he's not with us anymore. I'm so I'm so sorry about that. My uh, my people were wiped out by. <clears throat> you heard of the Red King? And she kind of like looks and she goes vaguely. Uh, I only learned of the name recently myself, but he came to my tribe and wiped us all out and I was the only one to survive wow that is not to I'm put so a downer sorry. on the night but no 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 that's that's perfectly and she kind of reaches out and she puts a, a soft hand on your forearm and she goes <laughs> okay so we need to to liven you you up something happy um happy happy I think I think it's 
I think it's time. Dremel does a little a little stretch from sitting on the floor. Yeah, I think uh, I think now's a perfect time. She goes, just wait right there, and you see her, and she takes her box, and there's this kind of like small kettle that she puts in the middle in between of you. Um, <clears throat> as she takes up this box and she grinds these uh, these mushrooms are very interesting looking to you. They're almost fluorescent. As she crushes them, you see different layers of color and uh, different light spectrums as she kind of grinds them into a powder and puts it into this very small kind of pouch that she puts into the kettle. And you see her, and with the flick of her wrist, you hear the, uh, the tea kettle almost like pour water inside of it before she kind of just looks at it, and you see that... Uh, it's starting to to warm up as you slowly hear like bubbles kind of break the surface of the uh, the water, and she kind of smiles and she goes, "Learned a few uh, tricks in my uh, my time." Did you make those yourself? Grow them rather? Oh, oh no, 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 no! They are from an abbey in the uh, continent of Valoria, not the city itself. But there's there's this library and it's very complicated but they grow these mushrooms particularly here and on my 18th birthday I got these so these are a birthday gift that you're sharing with me and she kind of like her brow furrows and she goes I didn't think of it that way but yeah and she takes another sip from her brandy. Let me show you something. You're sharing something special with me. And uh, I reach into uh, my pocket mm -hmm. and I pull out maybe five of those those uh, children's drawings that they were that were given to us. And you see her kind of smirk and she goes, you have kids. <laughs> uh, none that I'm aware of. Same. That was a joke. All right. Um, sorry. I haven't shown anyone these yet, aside from my companions. Um, and she reaches out and she goes, these are very cute. Adorable. There was a, um, there was a town we went to before we made our way here that was taken over by was it a succubus we don't remember it, it was not it was by, okay by, Liliandra by, was not a succubus she was a, right. a lesser demon yeah All right. by by a demon and uh we came to the town in search of someone's partner and, and her child and when we got there <coughs> we realized something was up long story short this demon had captured dozens of kids and was torturing them. Oh. And uh, they're okay now. I mean, physically. But uh, these are some of the drawings that they made for us as a thank you. It was uh, something that warned my icy heart as, and as painful as it is I, I, I think I think remembering this and sharing it with you is a you know set and setting you know the saying I'm familiar with the saying thank you no this is very special and I and I fold him back up put him away yeah. and uh, getting a little too Un or a little too uncomfortable with the intimacy. He's like, mm -hmm. "All right, so that uh, that tea looks yes. and smells delicious." Um, or terrible. Uh, I don't know. I can't smell anything right now. <laughs> uh oh. Um, she she kind of smirks and she goes, "Um, I have never tasted this, so hopefully it doesn't taste like the underside of a boat." mostly because I kept this in the underside of a boat. Well, if it does, I know who to blame. The boat? Always the boat. Always the boat. 
and she puts this very tiny teacup in front of you and she carefully pours the uh, the tea in and it seems to be kind of like this murky um, <clears throat> water but as soon as it kind of hits the cup and it settles it kind of almost has that fluorescent oil slick look on the top of different colors that you would see and she pours herself uh, a cup as well in front of her Whoop. my forehead was cut off um, and the two of you kind of just sit and look at the cup and then look back over at each other and so um okay i final you can back out now i don't know what fucked up thing is in here in yours or in mine yes i promise you it's not going to be any scarier in there than it is up in here Okay. And she kind of brings the cup up and she goes to new friends. To new friends. You two clink. Take the uh, the drink back. It's a very earthy uh, water, obviously, because it's ground up mushroom. And you kind of feel like this almost metallic tinging, like aftertaste in your mouth as you're like, and you see her and she's like, So, I don't know when this kicks in. Well, I can smell again. Yeah. So... Shit. No, that's not what it smells like. <laughs> Just play So, it. as you two are conversing, we will go back to the aquatic room as... Thok, you're kind of sitting there by yourself in the giant clam as eventually Val kind of comes out and she's has a towel wrapped around her hair and uh, she has the <clears throat> nightgown on and it is very it doesn't leave anything to the imagination as Manu's like shit and she goes thank you for um for getting this, I uh, I appreciate it. Um, oh. And she of looks course. at the bed at all of her shit that's just kind of clamored on the the sheets, and she goes, "Is that my bed sheet?" Yeah, I didn't know if there was potentially going to be a fight, and uh, you needed to protect yourself, so I just grabbed everything and threw it on the bed, and I didn't know how else to get it here, and I I don't do well under pressure. I'm sorry. And you're a pilot. <laughs> I'm a what? You're a pirate, Captain? Yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> Manu's like, he has his hands in his face. His face in his hands, and he's like, oh my god. And she goes, what? I'm sure it was a big ship. How did you outsmart my sister? I mean... She well, wasn't... Technically, you intercepted. Exactly. Exactly. I, 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 I'm pretty sure she would have. I mean, she found out it was me, right? Yeah. So, as the two of you converse, Donner, you kind of come in with Alder, who's like, ay, 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 ay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, so I, <clears throat> I found Alder. Uh, I walked here by myself. He did all by himself. He didn't even need any help. For me or his bed. Yeah, I'm not going to cast less restoration on him. He he seems like he's having a good time and he's needed that. He's had a rough few days, so. Just letting loose, you know. It's, um, he's just staying fresh. Yeah. And then I'm literally going to be like, she looks really pretty. And then I'm just going to fall face down. <laughs> and she goes. On the bed or on the floor? Floor. Yes. <laughs> and I was gonna Val, say, am I by the bed? I don't think I am. No, you completely you know, missed the not. bed, uh, which is a giant clam. So how could you? But yeah, you immediately, as soon as you get into the doorway, you're like, Pfft. and Val goes, I usually have that effect when I'm wearing this, but usually not that quick. It's yeah. been a while for all day. You have to excuse him. 
Your uncle? Was uncle? Is that what he... Brock? My uncle, yes. Yeah, he's he's he showed Alder a good time. And Alder tried to keep up. Uncle Brock usually does that. Yeah. Likes to let loose. Means he likes you, so you might want to keep it that way. Yeah, about that, um... We should probably not tell your cousin I'm here. I, I mean, I'm in the same camp as you. However, at some point, she, she's going to figure out and she's going to be even more mad at you. Well, so should we wait like two, three days? Let's be out at sea when she finds this shit out. And Manu is like <laughs> laying back on the bed and he's like, are you a strong swimmer? I just like look at him, but I don't say anything. And he looks I don't want and her he goes, to think I'm crazy. She can throw you off the ship. That's what I was alluding to. I mean, I can walk on water. That's good. How far can you walk on water? I don't know. I've never tested to see how long I needed to walk on it. That's going to be fun. Do you think she would show? I mean,. I did kind of sort of save your ass back there. By the way, sorry about the shit smell. And Val looks very confused. And she looks over at Donna. Does he talk to himself a lot like that? Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> yes, talking... and thank you. Uh, thank you for helping me. It happens all the time. Val, I was talking to you. Oh, you were talking to her the whole time? Yeah. No, when you were responding to Manu, is what... Uh, I did, well, you did the water walk. You were saying the water walk to him. Oh, I thought that was her that said that. My bad. Okay. No, it was definitely Manu. Got it. <laughs> um, Sorry, I need new glasses. No, but I, I turned to her and say, I mean, I did kind of save your ass back there. <laughs> yes. We yeah. can use that as collateral when it comes time, but uh, I'm, I'm kind of in agreement with Thok. Um, we should probably wait until we're out to sea a little bit. Uh, Thok, I would say you need to lay low. You need to stay off the main dick and out of the way of the captain. The main dick? Dick? No. Wh whose dick? The top, the main, the main dick. Yeah, I'm not going anywhere near anyone's dick. I'll stay here. It's not what I'm saying, but okay. You should okay. stay here. Got it. I'll stay here. And... You're Val's looking at Alder on the, the floor and she's like, is he going to be okay? He'll be fine. And I'm just going to grab his arm and just drag him across the floor <laughs> and just kind of like tuck him in a corner and just like tuck Are we going to Bernie's him? And I walk away. Okay. And she's like, wow, you, you're such a caregiver, provider. I mean, he did it to himself. So I've been left in worse positions by myself. I've been in the mouth of like an alligator, a stone tyrannosaurus, a frog monster. Most times they're not there. So the least I can do is tuck him in and put him in a corner where he's safe. I don't sense any hostility at all. There's not. <laughs> she goes over. I was over there for the frog monster. <laughs> Begrudgingly so. <laughs> <laughs> As Alder mumbles this as he turns over, I was there for the frog monster rabbit. Yeah, I was there for the alligator. Ribbit. I I do think we should crash though. Uh, I'd like to start early tomorrow if we can. Convince the captain to go so that we can make some time. And Val kind of nods and she goes, "Yeah, that'll be a." Uh, a good idea and she's like thinking and she goes it's a bit weird that you know your friend is in there with my cousin you don't think that oh god I hope not I don't think Dremel is into people <laughs> I, didn't, is I haven't people. asked but I don't I think I don't know I think he likes him tall I will be fair my cousin is everyone's type. And I'm not exaggerating that. Well, and she looks over at Thok. It's the best of her ability. <laughs> I was going to say, I was like, nah. And Manu's like, it's because you're gay. <laughs> gay! 
I just like, look at him, I'm like, nah, shit. <laughs> okay, crazy. Uh, I don't, I don't think so, but, um, I trust Dremel not to make a huge error in the short evening we have here. So I have faith in him. He's smart. Okay. So as we tucker and hanker down for the night, there aren't going to be any needs for watches. Uh, where are you sleeping? Uh, I'm going to uh, throw Thok out of the clam bed because paid for it, so I'm going to sleep on it. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like and, Pat. Yeah, it's 100% <laughs> Pat. Manu like looks at you, Thok, and he goes, I mean, we could probably make the uh, the tub comfortable. I mean, that's fine with me. Like, I can pretty much sleep anywhere. Um, I know. I'll gesture <laughs> to the, like, lounge chair thing, and mm -hmm. I'll be like, Val? And she looks at it, and she goes, yeah, no, I don't want to lay on that. Where? I mean, I'll, I'm going to sleep on the floor. I'll be fine. I mean, just, just punch Donner in the face. Move him That's... off the bed. I don't... I don't need to do, do that, so good night. Well, why she... not? Just have him get off the bed. That way you can sleep on the bed. He can sleep on the lounge. You are right there, by the way, Donner. Yeah. You're like laying in the bed. <laughs> just like <laughs> I'm just what? staring at the ceiling. <laughs> to slowly pull the blanket over it. I hit, but not make contact with my face. Fully spread eagle. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Donner, <laughs> off the bed. <laughs> Fuck, please leave. And Manu's like, yeah, this is going to go well. I, what just, do you mean leave? Like, I can't leave. You just told me that I couldn't, in a different I couldn't room, leave the room. Oh, this is a, we're in a suite. Just go somewhere else, please. You're not You're making him angry. Was that Manu or was that? Val? That was Manu. Okay. I just look at him like, oh, shit. You know what? I'm not even... Sorry, Val. Here, uh, I'll give you my pillow, I guess. I don't know. And make my way to the tub, I guess. Okay. So the tub is, is fairly large. It doesn't sit you super comfortably because you're you. So your <clears throat> arms kind of like dangle out the sides and your legs are kind of sprawled out. But the it's deep enough to where you can kind of rest your, your head and your neck back comfortably. As Manu kind of you look over and his head is on the other side of the tub. His arms are crossed and his legs are kind of like out from him. And, uh, uh mm -hmm. I look at Manu and I'm like, should I, should I message Dremel and tell him where we are? Um, I mean, that's, that's more of a you call captain. I mean, I, mm, he would have to talk out loud. And if he's with Jessica, or Captain Creed, whatever the hell she goes by. I just avoid her. You know what? I'll message him in the morning if he's not here. And you see him and he goes, best idea you've had all night. I thought the best idea I had was banishing her whenever the guards came up. Yeah, but then you forgot that it lasted like a minute and then she came back and you panicked. I, I mean... I made thunderous sounds from far away. I distracted them. They're I mean, also, he's talking at full volume, <laughs> just by the way. Sometimes panic, you know, survival instincts kick in. Some of your Good best night, ideas talk. just. Good night. My Donner. And I'll just go sleep in the corner right here. <laughs> and then I'm just going to cast. Oh, wait. Do I have that spell? Manu goes, I'll just sweet. Anymore. Sweet. Alder is sweet. He's a sweet guy. Um, yeah, I. Sorry, I'm trying to see if I. Still he's 215, and he's doing his best. <laughs> he's doing good. He's doing best. Um, I think. Uh oh. Go on. Okay, with that, we're gonna move on as. 
Bach is a little choppy at the mo. So, I think... Okay, oh, we'll, we'll go back to the captain's quarters. So, <clears throat> Dremel, eventually your body starts to get a little bit warmer, whether it's the, the room itself or it's the tea that you had ingested, but uh, you're starting to feel a little bit more lucid and a little bit more relaxed as it seems like Jessica is also feeling the same as she has her brandy in her hand and it seems like she's just kind of talking about almost nothing at the same time, just kind of like a motor mouth. As the colors and the different kind of hues in the room start to swirl a little bit and eventually you kind of shake and you're not in the captain's quarters anymore. You are in a, <clears throat> it looks like it's almost a temple. There are roses kind of outlined everywhere and there are rose petals. And you're in your body, you're you, and you're able to move freely about the space. And you see that there is an altar and this beam of light kind of coming down from it. And just past the beam, there's a figure. And you see at the very far end of the altar, can't be no more than 14 is a Jess Jessica Creed with her red fiery hair and this kind of she's almost wearing like um, nun garb where it's this very almost modest kind of covering everything and it seems like she's in the argue, like in the middle of almost like an argument and she's like that's not what I want and you hear this very kind of like low, calm voice go, I understand it's not what you want, Sunflower. However, if we're chosen for destiny, we're chosen for destiny. And you see this kind of hand reach out onto the altar and you notice that there, it's the, the color of the skin is almost like a rose uh, red, like a rose pink, as there is a tiefling that comes around the corner of the altar massive wings that are outstretched that slowly he tucks back. He's wearing this leather armor that looks like it's almost made out of stained glass that has a stained glass sunflower on it. And he has a rapier to his side. And his hair is half black, half like pitch platinum white, and it's pulled back. He has some visible wrinkles around his eyes and his eyes are completely green as he slowly starts walking down the steps and he goes, Sunflower, when I was chosen, it was exactly that, chosen. Of course there was a path I wanted. I wanted to be a poet. I wanted to write music. And I did that. But a lady called us, told me, and she calls you. And Jessica kind of like looks down at her hands and she goes, I don't want to be in a role of servitude. I'm not mother. I, I'm not ready for that. And so you see this tiefling and he kind of squats down and he goes, so what do you want? And she kind of smirks and she goes, I want to be a soldier like you, travel the world, fight. And he kind of smirks and he goes, you know, your mother wouldn't be too happy about that, right? As Especially as the priestess of Soon, she has a very high, high, high ar hierarchy in our religion. And she kind of smiles and she goes, I know, but if I could be a Rose Knight like you, that's what I want. And he kind of smirks and he goes, it's not going to be easy. And she goes, oh, no, I, I, I know. And he gets up and he puts his hands behind his back and he goes, you know, your uncle has been looking for a new squire. And she's like, Uncle Brock is looking. I, I could be I could be the squire. And he goes, you could. Uh, and he kind of looks and he goes, it's almost fitting. And he goes to his side and he unclips. And it looks like it's this uh, drum. You see this kind of wooden handle. And it looks like it's a piece of a rapier. Like, it has the, the cuff guard on it, but it looks like the blade is completely cut off. 
And he looks at it and he goes, well, if you are to be a Rose Knight, you need a Rose Knight's weapon. And he gives her this cutlass handle. And as she takes it, it almost forms into this plain wooden handle that you would see on maybe like a wooden sword. And she goes, I don't, this is your, this is your sword. And the tiefling goes, yes, and it has been in our family for generations. Uh, obviously, your aunt would want your cousin to have it, but I have it. Because your grandfather, my father, passed it on to me. And now, it's for you. Only blood will make it work. As long as the Tiermont blood runs through your veins, it'll work for you. And she kind of takes it, and you see the handle morph, and it turns into this massive, kind of almost Claymore-esque handle. And it has different golds and emeralds kind of inlined on it. And he goes, that was fairly quick. All right, bitch. Not you, the, the sword, sorry. And she goes, okay. And I don't know how to work this. And he smiles and he goes, when the time comes, Sunflower, it'll work for you and you'll know. And turn, it was your grandfather coming to me and perhaps he'll talk to you. And she kind of puts his uh, hands on her shoulder as she smiles and looks down at the handle as you slowly see the the colors start shaping and moving as you are back kind of seated back into the ship as it's disorienting but it's not to the uh, extent of like doing the uh wind walking or any kind of teleporting that you've done before where you get that deep kind of nausea and as you do you see jessica is looking at you and her eyes are wide and they're very like shiny as tears are just kind of coming out. She's not crying actively, like sobbing, but she's she looks at you like com you're a completely different person. And she's very quiet. Something tells me uh, we didn't see the same thing. And she goes, no, I don't. I don't think we did. I don't... I don't understand. I don't understand. It's, uh... It's a lot. I'll tell you that. And she... She goes... Yeah. And she kind of gets up, and she gets closer to you, and... You feel her warm hands on your, your cheeks as she looks at you and she goes, this is all I can see here. Let me see, let me see you. Uh, I, I look deep into her eyes and, and I say, this is me. <laughs> this is who I am. That old life. I can't go back. And she puts her forehead to yours and she goes, is it because of the Red King? It's because of the Red King. And I hope that when he's gone, I can be made whole. You must feel so lonely. And uh, Dremel thinks about deflecting. Mm -hmm. He thinks about making a joke and trying to play it off like he's okay, but in the moment, he knows he doesn't have to. Mm -hmm. He knows he's being seen for who he is. And not just seen, but accepted. And he just replies very and she goes 
Me too. And she lightly kisses your forehead. And she goes, Will you just lay with me? Of course. And she takes your hand and she leads you over to where her sleeping quarters is. And you two get under the covers and she just kind of turns her body to you as she kind of grabs your, your forearm and your wrist and she drapes your arm over her. As It almost sounds like she's crying a little bit as she kind of burrows against your your chest as you kind of close your eyes and smell the overwhelming smell of crushed cloudberries. As we move into the next morning. So, Alder. Yes, Wait. sorry, Donner. Uh, in the middle of the night, I'm gonna pick uh, Val up and put her in, in bed, mm -hmm. kind of tuck her in, and then go sleep on the lounger. Yeah. Okay. So you kind of pick her up, and <clears throat> as you do, there's kind of this electricity, not even in the metaphorical sense, but there's like... Actual electricity. Uh, actual electricity that kind of bounces off of her and kind of hits your fingertips, and you kind of scoop her up, and she's in that half awake, half dreaming state. As she kind of looks around and she looks up at you and kind of smiles as she puts her, her hands around your neck as you see her and she gets comfortable as you kind of carry her over. And very sleepily, she goes, you're a very nice man, mystery man. I try my best trying to make up for a lot of things I used to do. She smiles and she's all the way on the like corner of the bed that you put her on and she kind of balls up on her side and she goes I'll make sure nothing happens to you at the island. Good. I'll make sure nothing happens to you either. And you see her and her eyes are still closed and she smiles and she goes good. Just gonna kind of pat her on the head. And you see her, and her eye kind of dreamily opens as she looks at you. Go to sleep. She closes the. You see that one golden eye close. And I'll walk over to the lounger. Um, and I'll. Uh, if there's like a fireplace, I'll throw another log on. Okay. Kind of get it going again. And I'll just kind of lay down on the lounger and stare into the fire before I fall asleep. Okay. Then you do, and. You take in that smell of the smoke and the oak burning. And memories. Memories as you feel the warmth of the glow as you slowly close your eyes. And then, yes, we will get to to a very, very hungover alder. <laughs> as the drunk body and the hungover body is very unkind, as all of you will know. Uh, as you wake up way too fucking early than you anticipated and your head feels like Io literally like banged into it inside with her beak and flapped around as you open one eye and you're in this tacky fucking room. There are pastels. There's a giant fucking clam bed as you kind of like look around and Aya is on top of this open clam shell as she's kind of looking at you as you start to stir. Oh, 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 why does everything hurt? And you feel your heartbeat in your head. You're just like. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> what are you going to say? You kind of like spread eagle and I just kind of lands on your chest and she coos, but it sounds like she's screech, like squawking at you. Oh, how sensitive oh, your ears are. <laughs> oh, sweetie, so loud. So loud. Yes, although it's you're okay. very loud and it's very early. Please oh. shut up. Why are you screaming at me? Because you're being so loud. <sighs> oh, okay. Sorry. Ah. Uh. And then you hear from the bed, now two people are being very <laughs> loud.
It's you too. <laughs> You're being loud. Sorry. And Val kind of gets up and she stretches a little bit. And you, Alder, you get a better look at her now that she's in this gown. And she, like I said, it doesn't leave like anything to the imagination as she kind of stretches and yawns and looks at you. And she goes, you've been through the shit, huh? Uh, yeah, I don't drink much, if you couldn't tell. Oh. And she gets up, and you see her legs kind of swing from the bed, and she puts her hand, her arm out for you. Come on. Thank you. And she pulls you up, and your equilibrium's off. You're just kind of, like, holding onto one of the walls. And um, she goes, okay, we're going to get food in you now so that way you don't throw up in this room okay good good idea the greasier the better and she kind of goes over and there's that um there's this kind of like kimono that's draped over another chair and she's like fucking and she puts that on and ties it around as it's a little bit more modest than what she's wearing as she kind of slowly and softly opens the door as Alder, you kind of like, you're holding your head and you're using your staff to kind of lean on it as she slowly closes the door. With the uh, what time is it exactly? There aren't any windows in this level, uh -huh. so you're not entirely sure without getting out. So if I was to like, let go of Thunderclap right now, probably wake up most of the boat. You can assume so. <sighs> Risk reward, risk reward. Uh, I'll go and do it. Never mind. Okay. And you kind of just roll back over with the thought of like, <laughs> I could have just destroyed his head. I could have popped it like a pinball. So <clears throat> there, Alder, you see that there is the occasional hustle and bustle. There are people coming out of their rooms. There are girls going in with like kind of these carts that are, you would assume would be different kind of linens and things that they're changing for sheets and whatnot as you occasionally see some very familiar uh, uh, activity as to you, as you see some very hungover people kind of coming out. They're in the previous clothes, like disheveled kind of like uh, clothes, as everyone is kind of like almost scooted out of the, uh, the lower deck onto the upper deck. The suns are almost cresting over uh, the the shoreline and you actually see that the sky is that kind of uh, fluorescent pink and okay. uh, purples as the sun is starting to come up and Val kind of looks and she goes, oh man, and her clock is still working. And she kind of smiles and gently puts her, her hand on your shoulder and she guides you over to where the bar is and you look at where the table is and you just see like there's all those glasses still there as you see Brock is just kind of like, you see his shoulders and you see them heaving up and down as he's breathing. As you can assume Brock slept there that night. As there's this oh. fine like blanket of dew that's just kind of over him. And she's like, um, oh, Christ. Should, oh God. Should we wake him? Don't worry, he'll wake up as soon as he smells breakfast. Okay. Ugh. And so she kind of sits with you and she goes, wow, you, uh, you took a liking to my uncle there. Yeah, we got along pretty well. Oh, it was nice. He's a good man. Very good man. Yes. And she smiles and tells the, the waitress that you'll be taking a, uh, a coffee and that you have ordered, and she looks at you, and she looks over at Aya. I'm assuming that there isn't a meat situation in this. Is that a safe Pref assumption? Preferably not. Eggs? Mm. I could do eggs. And she looks over, and she smiles, and she goes, uh, if you can have uh, some eggs going for us, that would be great. And she looks over at Brock, and his usual cure would be great. And she smiles, the, the waitress smiles and goes, yeah, I gotcha. And so Val kind of rests her face in her hands and she goes, so tell me 
And she says it like almost through gritted teeth, Aegis. How did you get mixed up with these uh, three fellows? Um, that's a really good question. I tend to ask good questions. And in order to answer that question, what have you learned about us already from Donna? Well, I know you are all fugitives. Okay, cool. That's how we know each other. <laughs> <laughs> and she smiles and she goes, okay. So how long has it been since you you all broke out? Uh, oof. Um, it's been what? Two or three months? About a, it's been about two, yeah, two and a half months. Yeah, about two and a half months, I think. Shit. And she kind of smirks and she goes, so, uh, if you don't mind me prying, what'd you do? Well, if you ask me what I did, I shouldn't have been locked up for as long as I was. Anyways, that's my personal take on it. Um, so, essentially, have you ever been to uh, uh, Vestergaard? Yeah, we've had Port and Vestergaard before. Yeah, we've run a show there before. Okay, so essentially in Vestergaard, there was this um, wizard who was essentially running what was called the Dragon Stables. And you see and her base... eyes widen, and she puts her her hand on your forearm, and she goes, holy shit. Yeah? That was you? What do you know? Uh, I know that there isn't a, a place there anymore. Oh, That it's just um... cinders. Yeah, so uh, I was just trying to free the animals. Oh, oh my was, gods! And she gets that was up my goal. and she's like, oh, okay. That was my goal. You have just uh, become way more interesting. I didn't, um, I did not intend to kill anybody, but uh, at the uh -huh. end of the day, the guy was kind of a dick. So, <laughs> so you blew up his house? Well, no, he was also completely mutating and destroying animals and ruining their quality of life, all for the sake of testing for some absolute bullshit mind control things that he was working on. So, you know what? At the end of the day, some people don't deserve a house. She goes... <laughs> she smiles and she goes, I need to get you drunk more often. This is fantastic. Uh, well, I mean... Yeah, I was drunk, but you just found that out sober, so... No, you're very hungover. I need to get you drunk, and then I'll get more secrets out of you the next day. I mean, I at this point, everyone for the most part knows in the group knows stuff about me, so once we get more comfortable, you'll find out more things, I promise. Oh. Don't have to be drunk to find them out. Oh, Because apparently we're traveling together, so... And I cannot wait ages. And she smirks. As eventually... <clears throat> You're kind of seated with these large breakfast plates of you have different kind of potatoes and vegetables that seem to be grilled. And you have about four or five just kind of fried eggs on this bed of greens and oh. potatoes. And she looks at you and she goes, you're going to have to eat at least the eggs. Yeah, I know. Oh, how does it smell to him and his current state? It's a little nauseating. I was going to say, because it's, it's one of two ways. It's either, oh my god, this is the best thing I've ever smelled, or I'm repulsed slightly. So so as you're looking at it, you hear a stirring, and you hear, <laughs> I smell breakfast. As Brock gets up, and you just hear glasses clinking and occasionally shatter as some of them were just like, move. You, you see him stretch. <sighs> hey, just And he sits next to you. Hi, Brock. Oh, you look, you look worse for wears, mate. I am so sorry. I have uh, definitely had a better day or two. I can see that. And Brock kind of looks at the, the waitress and she comes out with this massive, like two platters as she puts them down. And one is just filled with eggs, 
like it's piled up and the other one is just meats and sausages like greasy and he's like do you want do you want some i oh, don't want to be rude uh, no i think i i have what i need right here and val's just kind of like watching this interaction and she goes are you sure you just you don't want any of that greasy gross sausage and <clears throat> Brock's like it's not gross it's lick from oil and grease but it's good as you hear the snapping of the sausage as he shoves one like and bites off in his mouth and <clears throat> eventually the waitress kind of comes back with this very small rocks glass that Alder you kind of look over and you see there's a raw egg in it and Brock kind of gets uh, one of these pepper cranks puts pepper on top of it puts this little, like, dash of something that uh, is on the table, and you just see him shoot it back. And he goes... Oh. Ah. See, that's a good hangover cure. Ah. Meanwhile, he didn't look hungover at all. <laughs> as you see him, and he's just shoveling eggs. As he's just kind of sitting, and he's looking up at the, the shoreline, he's like, we're going to deliver on a boat, mate. Tell you that much. And it's just like spittle kind of coming out as he's talking with his mouth full. And I Val is just toast. Val's just watching this. So as that kind of goes, Dremel in the captain's quarters, there are uh windows. They have different kind of like curtains, but the occasional sunlight does come in. And it looks like throughout the night you two had shifted but your arm is still like around her it seems like almost every time like you moved she kind of moved either head on chest or kind of almost instinctively and so as you kind of like open one eye and you open the other eye you kind of have that first moment of like oh god where am i and you look down and you just kind of see this um tanglement of this red auburn hair as you hear very small, like soft snoring coming from the uh, the head that's resting on your chest. As I wake up, um, w what time is it? How early in the morning? I would say um, about seven-ish. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll take a moment, about uh, a minute or so to kind of soak in the room who I'm with the way I feel finally like I've had a true connection that I haven't had in a long time and after that minute I'll, I'll slowly move out of the bed to make sure that she doesn't wake mm -hmm. um, and as I get up cast mage hand send it over to the door make sure it's closed and prepare myself for my my morning meditation okay um, so you kind of like th this mm -hmm. time instead of closing my eyes and, and trying to look inward i want to look outward and my eyes will stay open and mm -hmm. fixed on her okay and as you do you kind of smile softly as you concentrate and you hear those small snores it's almost like when she uh breathes out it's almost like she hums a little bit like she has a melody in her head that she's constructing and after you center yourself and you get comfortable to where you are again you stand up and look down at your hands and you there's a, a vanity that's in her her room and you kind of look at it and you look at the reflection in there and you see her in there as well as slowly one eye kind of opens and you see the silver eye kind of like looking back at you and this entanglement of, of red. And she goes, you're very blue. I am the most blue. If you look mm -hmm. up blue in the dictionary, it is a patch of my skin. It's a very dark dictionary. And she... She kind of snorts as she gets up. And she sits up and she goes, did you sleep well? 
I think I slept better than I have and <laughs> I couldn't tell you how long. And you see her and her eyes kind of trail off and she, she smirks a little bit. Me too. And I, I walk over to the, the bed mm-hmm. so that we're a little closer now. And uh, is she, she she's like laying on her side or, or where is she in the bed? She's like laying on her side. She eventually kind of just props herself up with her her hand under her cheek. I kind of kneel next to the bed and just start like part pushing her hair, like petting her hair a little bit, kind of mm-hmm. caressing her forehead with my thumb mm-hmm. and just looking at her. And she goes, you wouldn't mind. Not if you, of course, if you wanted to, it's a big ask. Uh, tonight, we, we do the, we do this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And she kind of smiles and she goes, but of course, it's it's strictly professional. Oh, of course. I wouldn't have it any other way. She smirks. And she goes, good. Um, let's, uh, let's shake on that. And sh- you see this very small hand kind of reach out. Harumph. <laughs> and she goes... I need to get ready and put on my face. Um, this isn't the first time, but I'm going to have to kick you out of my bed. You really know how to make a guy feel special. I'm <clears throat> to do so. All right. You should be making breakfast. I'll be uh, joining you all shortly. Want me to grab you anything? No. Good, because I wasn't going to anyway. Gotcha. Professional. And she goes, professional. And she smiles, and you actually see her put the, the blanket back over her head as you kind of exit the, the be- bedroom. Before mm-hmm. I leave, once she does that, I walk back over. I kind of guesstimate where her forehead is, and, and I kiss it through the blanket. Then and I leave. She, you just kind of, there's like a, a moment, and... Yeah, you leave and slowly kind of close the door behind you as you exit her quarters. <clears throat> and as you do, it's almost like it's a walk of shame, but you didn't do anything shameful. So everyone's like looking at you because there's only one way to her quarters. And it is very early. And there are occasionally some of the girls that look at you and then they start just like whispering to each other. And you're wearing the same clothes as you wore the other day. And your hair, you know, your hair is kind of like mussed up and you're like, yeah, as you slowly make your way up to the uh, the deck of the ship, as you see just a string of blondes, platinum hair with green tips, just holding in these massive hands as you see the Goliath Brock kind of have his arm around Alder. And it just seems like he's talking and you just see Val in this very like short, kimono her hair and her dreads are kind of like pulled back as she is just relishing in this whatever interaction is happening as you kind of walk up as i walk up i kind of duck down to try to make eye contact with with uh, alder and and i say hey just did you get into a fight last night you look mm, like shit uh, it feels like i did but no i just got way more drunk then I think I have in a long time. Dang it. Aegis was fun and I missed it. And Brock goes, yes, he was very fun. Um, and Dremel, you're, you're not a very intimidated person. But very softly, Brock puts his shoulder, his hand on your shoulder and gently squeezes and goes, now, just man to man or very tall gentleman to taller gentleman. My niece is very important to me. Hey, Brock, bro, Brock, bro. I'll stop you there. No, no. I, she tends to take after her father. Hopefully, if things develop like most partners of hers, don't be too heartbroken. And if you break her heart, I will rip you in half. Clean. 
I heard about his graduation story last night. I'll vaguely remember it. He will. He'll do it. And I put my hand on Alder's face and just push him away. <laughs> and I like I'm I'm holding his face. It's not just push away. It's just like I'm holding it to be like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> tall people are talking. And, That's a tall conversation. <laughs> tall order. And, Show and, yourself out. <laughs> I keep eye contact with him, and I say, you got nothing to worry about, but you don't know who you're messing with. Do not mm. threaten me again. And then I kiss his forehead and smile. And he smiles back. I hope we find out. Should and I like you? <laughs> And he smiles and he punches you in the arm and he goes, I like you too. Ugh. So eventually you you are also given like a breakfast platter of diff much smaller than what Brock was eating and uh, less, I would say, involved than what Alder was eating. So just different kinds of like fruits and eggs and meats and, and whatnot. As eventually back down at the aquatic room, uh, Donna, are you still staying on the, the Shea Lounge? Uh, yeah, most likely. Okay. And then... I'm awake, but I'm kind of just looking at the ceiling. And you just hear, like, footsteps from the, the upper deck. As the, uh, the fire that you had fed earlier and the previous night has just turned into just cinders at this point. There's no real heat emanating from it. And I just kind of under my breath go, we need to go... As you say that, Thok, we'll go back to you, where you're in the middle of your desert with Manu, and you're being buffed by this red, kind of quartzy sand that you're familiar with as the wind kind of howls, and your backs are turned to the source of light that's coming. And Manu kind of looks at you, and he goes, we're back here again. So it seems. And Manu kind of like looks behind and he goes, whatever that thing is, it's closer. Do, do I hear it? You hear a very like slow, shallow. <sighs> breathing. And you don't know if it's mixing with the wind or it's the breathing of this new death. But it's unnerving. I don't know what it wants. And very softly you hear Soon Garrosh. You and I will be reacquainted. So if we've met before, why well, won't you tell me who you are? That way I can prepare for our reunion. It is complicated, Garrosh. I want to see you again with mine own eyes. I mean, I know all about complicated. You don't have to explain complicated to me. I just want to know what I should call you. Maybe bring you a present. And you hear this very raspy, airy laughter, like chuckle. You can call me Otep. All right, Otep. So when are we going to meet face to face? And you hear like, you almost hear a smile as he goes, when we hit your beloved water. A sapphire sea for my red desert. Follow the smell of death and you will find me there. I'll be waiting, Garrosh. I don't say anything. I just look at Manu. 
Manu has a very concerned look on his face as he's looking behind him, like his bow- brow is fully furrowed. And he's unblinking at this light. Follow the small attack. Is, out of game, is a sapphire sea like the name of a sea, or is he just using that as like a reference to the ocean? He's using it as a reference to the ocean. Okay. 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 So, so eventually you're you're kind of stirred awake and Manu is sitting where he was and he has that same expression on his face that he had in your dream as he slowly gets up and he looks at you in the in the tub and he goes we're going to see very very shortly Fuck. And you see him, and he actually just walks, and you you see the curtains kind of waft open. Uh, uh, I'll ask him later. So, eventually you get up, and Donner, you're kind of like sitting upright as you two kind of make eye contact. And I would say almost without saying anything, you both kind of get up and start heading up to the the top deck where everyone else is. I I was supposed to stay in the room. You gotta eat, don't you? Yeah, are you gonna bring me food or? Fuck no, I'm not gonna bring you food. Go get it yourself. Then I'm not staying in the room. I put on my hat. Okay. You put on the hat. And eventually the two of you reconvene with a very hungover Alder and a uh, hungry Dremel. This is the first time you're seeing Dremel since basically after the show for you, Fock, and this is the first time you're seeing Dremel from when you left the captain's quarters. Morning, fellas. Good night. Morning. 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 You, you have a good night? I had a great night. How was y'all's? Uneventful. <laughs> Do I believe him? Oh, I'm being sarcastic as fuck. Oh, okay. <laughs> Yeah, man, no. me too. <laughs> Can I believe Do we it? know when we're <laughs> leaving? Soon. Hopefully. As far as I know. I mean, it's not exactly what we were talking about, but she did say that there was a request to leave last night uh, when guards came. Y'all wanted to leave right after the guards left? Uh, I didn't know about the guards, to be fair. I was in the room. Fun fact. There were guards here. Yeah, yeah. There were I learned here. that after the fact. Uh, Alda's also a big fan of the Queen now, just so you know. Who? Mm-hmm. The, queen. the Queen. Yeah, no, I, I know the Queen. You... Oh, Aegis? Uh, yeah, Alda. Yeah, Aegis. And Brock kind of furrows his brow, and Val is looking at you, Donner, like, As you keep saying Alder, and Brock goes, looks over at you, Alder, and goes, smiles, puts his arm around around you, and he goes, Alder. That's a different it's, name. Uh, it's my middle name, I think. <laughs> I think. No, Alder's my name. And Where'd it's... Way to go, daughter. He kind of smirks and he goes, points over at you, Thok. And you have a stupid name as well, do you not? Because it's the same as mine. Why my name's I think Brock is a nice name. And you feel like a squeeze on your shoulder, Alder, and he goes, mm. I was being genuine. I also like Brock as a name. I don't think it's bad. And I mean, he's just looking you down, man. Me? Yeah. I mean, I didn't choose the name Brock. Mm. It was given to me. And you see him, and he's looking at you, and let's see if his eye is as sharp as it used to be. Dun, I mean, I'm not dun, lying. Dun, dun. <laughs> Y'all gave me the name Brock, so... 
I mean, does anyone really pick their names? And no. uh, I mean, we all did. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, my parents he kinda, gave it to me. He looks and he his eyes kind of float up to the top of your head, and he goes, "Huh, that is a very handsome hat, Brock. Bit of a hat man myself." I know you were uh, the one that found one for uh, ages over here. Alder, yeah. Alder over here. Brock, the gig is up. It's it's Alder. Just say my actual name. It's okay. Right. Honestly, the reason I was using the my father's name was, well, Valdana knows it now. So I told her the story this morning. I, um, and he kind of taps the, the countertop and he goes, enjoy your breakfast. I have to, uh, get ready for ship out. Speaking of ship out, when is that, uh, <clears throat> how soon is that occurring? And he kind of smiles and he goes, you know, I'd probably ask the captain that. And you see him, and he picks up this massive broadsword that was at the uh, the table he was kind of sleeping at, and it's in this big leather kind of sheath as he straps it onto his back. And you see him slowly kind of walk to uh, the lower decks. And as he does so, kind of coming up, you see in kind of this... Um, I don't want to say it's like a puffy shirt, but it's this kind of like... But it's a puffy It's a puffy shirt. pirate shirt. It's a puffy shirt. She's wearing... Uh, Captain Creed kind of comes up. She's wearing this puffy-ish pirate shirt. Vest has these... Uh, her pantaloons on and these kind of like high-up boots. And she has to her side this handle that you would recognize uh, Don or, or Don or Dremel uh, that you saw from your vision too. with her. And she kind of gets up and her red hair, you see, is kind of like pulled back. And she starts talking to some of the girls and they start nodding and she takes notice of the the lot of you and the group of you as she walks over to where the kind of drawbridge is and you see her talking to the quartermaster before. She kind of places some coin in her uh, their hand and they clench it and move down as you see slowly the dock start to, like the ramp start to come off. And you see her and <clears throat> she cracks her neck and kind of comes over and so, I trust we all slept well. <clears throat> Woke a little earlier than I would have anticipated, but fine not nonetheless. Bad. And she smiles and she goes, well, I hope that um, the rest of your stay is just as pleasurable here on the Wandering Rose. Uh, where exactly are we going to stay? Um, I believe you booked the aquatic room yeah um with the amount that i've paid how long does that last for how many nights do i have this room for depends how long we get to the island i guess hmm. perfect that's so great so anything else you need before we ship off let's do it all set that's and she smirks and she goes, well then, I guess we'll be on our way then. And you see her and she starts going to the, the backward of the, where the, the wheel is. Eventually you see these different working hands and Val eventually is, she pushes off from where her chair is as she goes to help with the, the sails. As you see these uh, pink kind of sails kind of unfurl as they start getting wind as you slowly hear the creaking of the boat leaving the dock and the water hitting the side of the boat as you eventually begin to hit open water as the Driftwood Harbor is becoming more and more tiny as you look out on the uh, the deck. I um, I lean over to Thok and Alda and I go, hi, it's me, Donna, you know me. Uh, we're all going to need to chip in if this is the room that we have. Because uh, I paid for last night, so you just want to take turns. How do we want to do that? Um, next time, don't blow fake name cover, uh, first of all. And obviously, yeah, we'll all share. 
also so like we shouldn't have fake name cover if we're going to be traveling with people so it's just kind of the way it was I... a little late you are aware that the captain of this ship doesn't like me right i'm Once well aware dead. of that book but i'm okay with you going overboard and me not we're also still fugitives and that's not until we get out of dodge people aren't keen to that guys i understand what you're saying but not we shouldn't lie to the people that are taking us to where we need to go they're our only mode of transportation so if we have anything to get out in the open we might as well do it now yeah so you're but the... drop the disguise now i'm so saying you might as well tell that i am well the, th the way i see it is we could do it now or we can do it later but if she knows that you've been on the boat longer She's probably going to be a little more pissed off. Well, I, I don't but there's think... also a. Go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. I was going to say there's also a time and a place for these things. Like, I was making a good relationship with Brock. If we got out to sea and I talked to him later on, and I'll be like, by the way, my name's actually Alda, not Aegis, it probably would have gone a little bit better than you just calling me the wrong name and then him just getting really pissed. Or you could just give him your name. Or well, something that we already didn't know happened. we would. The name had already been given, man. You gotta let people reveal themselves on their own time. Yeah, oh I get God. what you. I get it. I understand. You're right. If we knew what was gonna happen, giving our real names to begin with would have been ideal. But we did. We did know. I told you. I told you that this is where we were supposed to be, according to Zunu, who we've done all this thing, these things for, and we're taking it as word. This is where we we were supposed to be, and you guys still tried to play the deception game. It's not my fault. Oh, I, played I guarantee the deception you game that she knew. If she knew you were with me, you would not have been allowed on the ship. I can and almost guarantee you that. To be also another part clear, Dremel and I met her before we even got here, and she had our other names then. So Who we were she? just sticking with Valdonna and um, what's what's her name? The lady that was watching her. Jesse. Uh, Anna Marie. Anna Marie. You got oh, Anna me, Val. Anna, Anna Marie. Side note. Uh, we met you both see it's the thing we still met Anne Marie and Anne Marie met us with our fake names and then Valdona killed people so yeah okay we were kind of sticking with the story before we knew all of this stuff happened that's no, all I'm trying to say too. sorry all day uh well you should you you, you don't I should have asked did you want room. me to talk to you last night did you want me to talk to you when you were completely inebriated and is that when is that when I should have talked to Donner, you? Donner, you should have just read the room. There was a reason we were calling them Aegis when we were all sitting here earlier. You know what? Here's your gold. I put ten gold on the table, I get up, and I walk back to the room. Okay. So, Doc gets up, puts his gold on the table, and saunters off. And I also put down ten gold, and I say, Remember, we're a group. It's not just you. And I also walk off. Okay. Alder follows Doc. Uh, I'm not going to be staying in the room, but I feel kind of left out. So I'm going to walk too. But then I'm going to come back and sit back down. But I'm not, I'm not saying that. I'm going to do it. Okay. Yeah. So... Dremel just kind of looks, walks, and almost does like a lap. <laughs> like you see him, and he like walks around, and the captain takes notice of you, Dremel, as you whisper something over to her, and you see her smirk, and she kind of you kind of round back over like in a light trot, and you sit back down next to uh, to Donner. Um, he yeah, steps in. Is that? Yeah, I'm trying to hit 10,000 a day, and it's kind of hard when we're going to be on a ship, so I figured I'd start my lab now. It's fair. Just a good thing there's three levels to this. Do a lot of stairs. Oh, yeah, my legs are going to be ripped. It's but... going to look good on you, though, because you're tall. Oh, yeah, I'm really going to fill out my armor now. It's going to be nice. But hey, man. I, I know what you're saying, but you got to let people have their own journey. You can't control when someone's going to reveal who they are, what they are. No, I can't. But it goes against 
what I stand for and what I believe in. And I believe that if I'm not truthful with someone from the get, then how can they ever trust me? If you're going to start out your relationship with a lie, how can you grow on it from there? Well, you live by that motto. Don't force that onto other people. I'm not forcing it on anyone. You forced it on Alder. No, I made a mistake, and Alder didn't understand. So you forced it on him. You outed him as Alder, not Aegis. I didn't out him. Drim, really? Drim, this wasn't done with malicious intent. It doesn't I have wasn't... to be. It doesn't have to be. Just admit you made a mistake. I did. I just said it. Right, but you're very defensive. I mean, it's hard not to be defensive when everyone's decided to take a swing at me. I came back, didn't I? You still left. Yeah, I had to get my steps in. <laughs> Look, man, I was upset too. It's shitty. It's shitty to accidentally do that to someone. I get it. And yeah, I was pissed. And I took my 47 steps. And then I said, okay. Oh, it's that big? Holy shit. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I did a quick lap, so. Listen, I, I don't hate you, man. You're still my brother. Just maybe apologize to Alder. And to Thok. And maybe to Thok. Did, did, he, did he out Thok? <laughs> He tried to. Tried to, yeah. So maybe I just apologize to. to the guys. We are a group. What Alder said was then right. Why do I feel like the one that's on the outside right now? They weren't willing to talk to me. Like you are. So when they're ready to talk to me, then we can talk. But until that point, I'm going to keep living by my code and the only way I know how. Does your code not have any room for mistakes? What no, does your code say about redemption? About apologizing? My code is completely okay. I've apologized before. I've tried to make a connection with these guys. I've tried to let them into my world. You as well. But I'm not okay with lying. We are wanted fugitives, right? Correct. So anyone that is in our path is in danger. We are knowingly put, putting them in danger. If they so choose to accept us into their life, then they are accepting that danger. If we lie to them, then we are unknowingly letting these people be a part of our lives that could could die for us and not not care, not know. We learned this lesson already in town whose name I can't remember. We learned White this Willow. lesson. That one. White Willow. Thank you, bird. <laughs> Hello? Just a seagull flying overhead. White Willow! <laughs> That's weird. That's strange. We learned this lesson already. Lying does not get us anywhere. Being truthful and making alliances with people that we trust and we think trust us is the only way we're going to get anywhere in this world. Knowing what you know about Thok and uh, Captain Creed's relationship, do you think we would have made it onto this boat had she known who he really was? I don't know. Because I don't know how willing Captain Creed is to be able to sit down and have a legitimate conversation. Would it have been difficult? Absolutely. But... Sometimes people will surprise you. You'd have to give them the opportunity, though. Sometimes you have to do what you can with what you have to get where you need to go. I'm not going to say I don't appreciate and understand why Thok would keep that information from Captain Creed. Because obviously it's gotten us out of port but Drem, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie to people we're gonna be at sea with that we're gonna ask to risk their lives for us. And I think given some more time, Alder would have revealed that. I think he even said so before we left. 
got to let people have their own autonomy. You're not a god. I'm not looking for autonomy. I'm not looking for control. I'm looking for honesty. And if you guys can understand that, then maybe I shouldn't be part of the group. And Dremel backs up, kind of stands, and says, I think you need to look inside yourself and open up a little more. Open up your mind. Realize that there's more than just your way of living. And if we're going to get where we need to go, and if we're going to save your people, you have to let the group be the group. I'm fine with the group being the group. I will not be in a group with people who are willing to lie. So you're not fine with the group being the group. How can I trust you if you're going to lie in front of my face to other people? How can I trust you? Because when, how am I going to know when you're lying to me? If I have to put my faith in you fully and trust you and trust what you're doing and trust your judgment, like I did last night, like I've done time and time again for these guys. I understand what you're saying and I, I get it. I look, I'm not, I'm not arguing what I did was wrong. I'm not saying that it was the right thing to do to out Alda. But what I'm saying is it may have been better for Alda to just be sincere from the start. Right. That didn't happen. So you can't live in this theoretical world. Live in what was actually happening. No, and you want to know how you can trust state. us? All the things you just said. You've trusted us time and time again. You've trusted me time and time again. And it's worked out fine. So far. You're right. So far. If you're still but, holding reservations, I don't know what to do, man. This wasn't what this conversation was about, but it's what it's it's becoming. Now look, all I was trying to say is you should apologize to Alder. It's understandable that he's upset. You should apologize to Thok. It's understandable why he's upset. I'm still on your side. But recognize that sometimes you do make mistakes. And being honest is owning up to them. Maybe you're right. Next time, maybe we should use our real names. But you weren't privy to the situation that happened before we all met back up. No, because nobody told me anything. How am I supposed to know what I don't know, Drem? I'm not saying that. I'm saying that you should recognize that sometimes you don't know shit. And maybe people are doing things for a reason that you don't know. And I think after the past three months, you should trust us enough that our judgment is not that flawed. We have our flaws, but we do things for reasons. I don't know, Dream. I, I get what you're saying. I, and again, I've, I've said it. I agree with you. I agree. I should go to them and talk to them. But they should talk to me too. This is the same mistake we made in White Willow. We held information from them, and when they found out, they almost kicked us out. They looked at us like we were traitors, like we betrayed them. So what do we do? We come to a new place and we do it all over again? Listen, that's a different conversation. It's not, not a different conversation. It is it's a different the conversation. Same conversation. I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm not saying we shouldn't use our real names. I'm saying that you need to talk to them. Yeah, they can talk to you too. It's a larger conversation. But right now you're being an asshole sitting on your hot fucking horse like you're better than the rest of us. It's not about being better than you. It's about honesty. It's just about being a group. It's about being a group of friends that trust each other. And in a group of friends who trust each other, you can trust the other person to do what they're doing for a reason. If we want to have a conversation about tactics, that is a separate question. That's a separate conversation. This is going in circles, man. I'm going to go. Fine. Have a good breakfast. And I walk off. Okay. So, Donner, you're sitting at the uh, the bar of the ship, looking over at your cup. And you feel a shadow kind of go over your head as you look up and you see these big black wings of this bird that's circling and eventually just kind of comes down as you see Paul 
<clears throat> sitting there. This is the first time I've seen Paul. This is the second time you've seen Paul. This is the second time I've seen Paul. Mm-hmm. And Paul is looking at the different plates and picking up and eating and looking at you inquisitively. Oh my god. Of course you would show up now. I'm gonna reach into my pocket and pull out uh, my wondrous figurine of mm-hmm. a raven. And I'm gonna like kind of show it to you. Be like, look, I have one of you too. It looks at you and it looks at the figure inquisitively with its good eye. Does it look familiar to me? The, go ahead and roll a uh, intelligence check for me. Just straight intelligence. Oh my god, that rolled so many times. Uh, 11. 11. Um, so as you kind of are looking at the bird and there is a, a comfort between them. Um, as you do, you kind of hear footsteps behind you as you turn around and you see platinum blonde hair and a wooden staff in their hand. Could try talking to him all you want. You're not going to get through to that bird. Oh. I, I met, have you tried? Excessively. And, and I'm going to reach my hand out to the bird to see if it'll let me touch it. Then it stays fairly still as you put your hand over its head and kind of trace I'm your just... finger along its crown. This is Paul, right? Uh, that's what Drem named him, yeah. Does he, uh, with that check, he doesn't look familiar to me, right? There's a familiarity mm-hmm. and a comfort to it. Got it. Um, I like Paul. I don't dislike him, but his spell, my spells to try and communicate with him and all of my abilities from my, you know, training in the woodlands don't work on him. So I don't know if he's necessarily a bird entirely, but it's very odd for that to not work. Uh, you don't yeah. know if he's a bird? That's I mean, the strangest statement I've ever heard anyone make, but I don't have any reason not to believe you. I've seen you talk to a mushroom amalgamation. So, <laughs> and you hear in the back of your head, remember me, <laughs> kids, <laughs> your crackheads, children. And I'll just keep kind of petting Paul's head and I'll be like, don't know. I do apologize for getting upset. You weren't privy to the information from what happened before we got on the boat. And I'm going to put this with a but as, but well, when we were on the boat last night, we spent a good amount of time together where I was introduced and spoken to as Aegis multiple times in your presence. I just find it a little bit hard to believe why, when you heard that, you would still do that. I felt that we were starting to make a lot of strides in our relationship as uh, as friends, since we're traveling together. And it just, I'll be frank, it hurt me a little bit, because I'm more than willing to come out on my own, but when I was originally in the city and introduced myself as Aegis, I didn't know how quick everything was going to happen. So I was just hopeful that when you had heard that name get called last night, whether it be when we were ordering drinks at the show or whether we was when we were sitting playing poker with Brock um, and Brock too, you know, um, I was hoping that you would kind of catch on to that. And it seemed like you did last night, but then didn't this morning. And that's realistically why I'm upset. It's a very fair reason to be upset. I apologize. I get it. I guess I just forgot. Um, getting comfortable with new people. But I said it to Drim, and I say it to you. I, I will. I guess I'll add a but to my. I'm sorry, because I am. I'm sorry. I apologize. But I accept. 
I don't think we should lie to people that we're going to be spending any amount of time with. I understand the fugitive angle, but I said it to Dream, you know, we lied in White Willow and we lost the trust of those people. We're already lying on this boat and there's going to be some fallout from that too. So I think <coughs> we, you're right. It, it developed very fast. There was no way for us to know we were going to end up here in this way. And But I think we... I think we need to start being truthful. And I, I agree... Oh, go ahead, sorry. Uh, no, you're fine. I'm not comfortable lying to people. I'm not. I've never... I've, I'm Donna. I don't want to be anyone else. I'll be completely honest. I'm not good at lying in general. That's why the only name I could think of is my dad's. Um, so it is what it is. Um, but with that being said, I think I agree with your but... But I think for this instance, you need to almost put an asterisk on your butt. Um, <laughs> it's kind of like a, a, a flag. It kind of looks like a little butthole. Uh, right. But you need to put an, an asterisk on your butt. And the reason why I say that... Mm-hmm. Can you show me what one looks like in your book later? Not now. Yeah, yeah, of course. Okay. Um but the reason why I think you need to put an asterisk on your butt is with how quickly this situation developed, everything was on the fly and we kind of didn't know immediately that this is the plan or what was happening. There was guards looking for someone to be arrested. We're still fugitives, so we still needed to lay low. You know, I agree that I think telling the truth is the right way moving forward. I'm bad at lying as it is. But I think in this situation, and at least for right now, it was a little bit warranted. And that's just my piece on it. I see where you're coming from, and I do agree with you. But I've said what I'll say. I like your butt, but put a little asterisk on it for this time, and I think we're good to go. All of it, yeah. I'll do all of what you said as soon as I figure out what some of those words mean. Okay, so like an asterisk is basically like... And um, uh, uh, it's kind of like a footnote or like an amendment. So like, it's basically like me saying you're doing right, but like, here's something else that happened that kind of changes precedent. So it's like if a symbol that means sense. but. Yeah, it's like a but to a but. It's a but but. A but but. Got it. Understood. Booty 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 booty. So, <laughs> all of you guys. What was that? Rocking in a well? Oh, God damn it. I once was a bread pan. Um, so the two of you kind of sit and converse as Paul kind of pecks. And... This bird looks just... I feel like I... I know I've seen it before, but I, I just... It's comforting. It's familiar. I don't. I can't quite put my finger on it. But... Do, do I get those similar vibes that he's saying that are outside of what I like just I've tried to talk to him before so I know who he is um I mean you you are aware of the bird the bird is very odd it's he's a very odd raven um but there I wouldn't say there isn't that comfort and familiarity that that Donner feels gotcha um I mean hey I, I don't know what do you believe in or what your gods tell you but maybe this is a bird that you just like know from like a past life or something like that you know it's a reincarnation did you know anyone who had like a weird eye I actually did know someone who had a weird eye maybe that's what it is I mean I'm no expert but I definitely still need more coffee so that's so, an idea you kind of gesture, and one of the waitresses comes by with uh, her pot, fills it for you. So, as the two of you kind of sit in that that silence, we'll go down and we'll button this with Thok. You're going down to the lower deck, and as you kind of walk, you see Manu leaning against 
one of the hall hallway walls, and he's still got that same look on his face since being in the desert. And he looks like he's bothered by it, like he's unnerved. I walk into the the room that we're staying in. Yeah. And have him follow, obviously. You follow. It, like, when you open, like, he is on the bed and he's just bearing a hole in the floor as he's just concentrating. Like, he's just thinking and putting things together. What's on your mind? That name, Hotep, it's... It's familiar. I was going to ask you about it, but you seem pretty in a hurry to get out of the tub this morning. And he kind of, like, looks up and he has this un, like comfortable laugh and he goes, I know the name Hotep because that's my family name. So, is your name Manu Hota? It is, Doc. Where and I don't know what name? that means. And I'm scared. Don't be. We'll, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out together. Or die trying, right? Maybe third time's a charm. Maybe this is where it sticks. And he looks at you and he goes, I just have a very, very bad feeling. That was me. And he looks back in his hands and his brow relaxes as that's where we'll end it for tonight. Neato. We. What's up with Mr. that? Mr. What's up with that? I said, uh, okay, that's all I'm doing. <laughs> we don't want to get demonetized. <laughs> Fuck. Oh, no, we already were. Shit, I mean, uh, sucker. Talked about buttholes, so. Oopy. E pluribus anus. <laughs> he did. I wanted to say you. that so bad. <laughs> uh, guys, thank you for watching another episode of Dungeons and & Dragons and & Junk Drawer. We will be back next week. With a whole new episode uh, of Make Believe Play Pretend Imagination. And <laughs> uh, thank you guys for watching. Josh, would you like to read some names of some peeps? Hell yeah, dog. Uh, big old shout out to another TV viewer Commander Root, Devil in 07, Electrical Longboard, Gandalf the Babe, and a little uh, over, the, over the week we had two follows. So a shout out to Says Lux and Quinn is Sour Milk. Finally, a name for Justin. <laughs> yeah something I can get behind guys thank you so much again for watching we'll be back next week with some more fun stuff thank you so much and uh, have a good week everybody oh my god hey bye <laughs>